recall it was an aluminum ion and it was surrounded by six water molecules. H, so we write H2O6 and the whole thing had a, the whole species had a plus one charge. So this is called hexa aqua aluminum. Don't worry about the name. You'll, you'll worry about the name later on when we talk about coordination chemistry specifically. Well, it looked like this. It is a metal center. It is aluminum and there is a water molecule bonded to the top. And again, remember, single line is a covalent bond. Now, I know in this particular course, what I did is I actually skipped the notion on bonding and I decided to go straight into kinetics and equilibrium. So uh, if, these, if any of this is a little strange, just know that a single line, a single bond, means a pair of electrons. That's all it means. So we will be going back and discussing it, but I wanted to save it for a little bit later because it tends to move a little bit faster and I wanted to spend more time with some of the equilibrium stuff. That's why I went over it. Non-traditional um, uh, sequence, but I think it's a good sequence. Okay, so I have, and I'll explain what these dashes and you know, wedges mean in just a minute. OH2. Actually, you can probably imagine what they mean already. OH2. So, I have an aluminum ion, and actually this is 3 plus, not 1 plus. Silver would be the 1 plus. Um, I have this aluminum ion, which is 3 plus charge, and if I drop this aluminum ion in some water, what happens is 6 water molecules attach themselves, literally bond to the aluminum, and they bond according to this scheme. They don't just bond randomly, they actually take up a geometric you know, figure around the aluminum. There's one on top, one on bottom. These dashes mean that it's, going, it's facing back. This is a three-dimensional representation on a two-dimensional flat surface. So when we see dashes, that means it's behind the plane of the paper. These wedges mean it's coming forward. So basically what you have is you know, this sort of bipyramidal structure. And this is a complex ion, and the whole thing has a charge of. So that's a complex ion. That's all it is. Just a metal center surrounded by ligands. Okay. Now, fortunately for us, we're not going to be concerned with the structures and the naming of it just yet. We will later on in the course, uh, if and when we discuss coordination compounds, we're going to be concerned with the equilibrium. So, we will concern ourselves here mm. with equilibria. But I did want you to see what it looks like just so you have a picture of what's going on. So here is the most important thing about complex ion equilibria. Ligands attach I'll also write detach, but we're mostly going to be concerned with attachment, one at a time, one at a time. So for example, this OH, you're not, the OHs aren't just going to converge on the water. It's actually going, going to go through a single step process. One water molecule is going to attach, then another, then another, then another. And for each of these, it's a reaction. It's an aluminum plus a water molecule goes to AlOH2O1. AlH2O1 plus a water molecule goes to AlH2O2. And each one of those actually is a reaction. And for any reaction, we can write a constant for it. So let's go ahead and, well, let me finish writing this. Ligands attach or detach one at a time to the metal center. Okay. Now, for example, Let's use silver. If I have some silver ion, and if I drop that silver ion solution in some ammonia, or the other way around, if I drop some ammonia in some silver ion solution, here's what happens. I'll go ahead and put the lone pair there. What happens is that the ammonia bonds to the silver, and it forms this species right here. This is an ammonia bonded to this covalently. It's a coordinate covalent bond. Both electrons came from ammonia, and the whole species is positive charge one. Well, there is, there is an, an equilibrium constant that's 
that's involved here. As it turns out, when this happens, at some point, the solution comes to equilibrium. There's going to be some of this, some of this, and some of this floating around in solution. But take a look at how big the equilibrium constant is. 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3. This is called a formation constant. Uh, I'll write it over here. A formation constant. It's a formation constant because this complex ion is forming. Take a good look at this, 2.1 times 10 to the 3. We're accustomed to seeing, you know, acid and base constants like 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 8, 10 to the negative 7. And when we just did solubility products, we were seeing even smaller constants. We were seeing things like 10 to the negative 16, 10 to the negative 29. Well, a small constant means that the equilibrium is not very far to the right. Here, this is a very big constant, which means that this equilibrium is to the right. What that means is that if you drop ammonia in a silver solution or vice versa, basically what's going to happen is this whole reaction is going to end up going entirely to completion, meaning you're going to find mostly this species. That's what this that's what constants tell you. They tell you how far to the left or to the right an equilibrium is. It's true. It is an equilibrium. You're always going to find a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But when we say little, we mean little, because this equilibrium constant tells us it's going to be mostly this. It's going to be virtually no silver. OK. Well, here's what's interesting. This is not the only equilibrium that's going to exist. Once this forms, this species, like we said, ligands attach one at a time. So this species actually ends up reacting with another ligand, with another ammonia molecule. So NH3 plus plus NH3, another ammonia molecule, and it forms the complex ion Ag, NH3, 2 plus. Now this has a coordination number of 2. So one molecule of ammonia attaches itself to silver to form this. But then another molecule of ammonia attaches itself to the complex that was formed to form this. And it actually stops there. It's stable when silver ion in ammonia has two ammonias attached to it. Well, there is a second formation, con there is a formation constant associated with this one. And this is 8.2 times 10 to the 8.2 times 10 to the third. You notice it's higher than this. So when I drop ammonia in silver or vice versa, it forms this, but th as soon as this is formed, it grabs onto another ammonia and it forms this. So really what you have in solution at the end, if, if you add actually enough ammonia, which under normal circumstances is the case, anytime we have a solution of a metal ion, the ligand that we add is always added in excess, specifically to drive the reaction forward. You're going to have mostly this. Yeah, you're going to have a little bit of this, a little bit of ammonia, a little bit of silver, but mostly it's going to be that. So that's all that's taking place here. We have the formation of something. We can form a constant because there is an equilibrium. We've measured the constant. We, have, we call it the formation constant, just like anything else. We have an acid dissociation constant, a base association constant, a solubility product constant. For complex ions, it's called a formation constant. And usually we have the subscripts, these 1, 2, 3, to mark down the first ligand, second ligand, third ligand, and the constant you know, associated with them coming together with the metal center. OK. Now, let's go ahead and jump into a particular problem. So in a solution of Ag plus and NH3, all four species exist in an equilibrium. And the four species are silver, let me go, silver, ammonia, this thing, which is actually called a monoamine silver one, and also this thing. This is called diamine silver one. And again, you'll learn about the naming scheme later on. So there's an equilibrium. So all four of these species are in some kind of an equilibrium. However, again, when we say equilibrium, well, again, 
we look at these numbers to let us know what chemistry is going on. We don't just presume that it's an equilibrium like any other equilibrium. We want to use every bit of information at our disposal. These are really, really big formation constants. That means that pretty much it's going to be mostly this species. There's going to be very little of this and this. The ammonia, in practical situations, we put in so much ammonia that it's virtually constant. And you'll see what we mean when we do an example. So just wanted you to get an idea of what's going on. We have these formation constants. We have an equilibrium equation that we can write. So now let's go ahead and see what we can do.